if this gets out, if this reaches the masses properly in China, this could be a game changer. It's very rare that I jump on something because I like to fact check. I like to make sure all the pieces are in order to make sure that I'm talking about something that I fully understand. But in this case, it's just so transparent and so big that I have to talk about it. There is a tennis player named Peng Shuai, and she's very, very famous for being one of the best tennis players of all time in China. Peng Shuai posted a post on the internet, on the Chinese internet, about how she was involved in a forced affair with one of the top CCP members of the entire country. And his name is Zhang Gaoli. Zhang Gaoli was the equivalent of the vice president of China. He is the vice premier. And he was implicated in a very, very serious affair. It's one of those things that's not usually ever covered in China. When you have scandals, it's usually about low level corruption or maybe some people got involved in some altercations that were in some sort of provincial government. But this is top, top within the equivalent of the White House, Zhongnanhai, China. And this is the kind of stuff that is not supposed to get out to the public. Yet it did, and it is making absolute waves across the country right now because of how rare this instance is. I figured it was a good opportunity for me to talk about this, but not only that, something very, very serious that happened in the same vein to my wife, who actually asked me to speak about this upon hearing about this news in China. The long and short of it is that about 10 years ago, Zhang Gaoli, which is the, who is the kind of the leader of Tianjin, and Tianjin is a massive, huge city in northeastern China, it's near Beijing. Very, very wealthy place, very high position of power. He sought to have an affair with this tennis player, this pro tennis player, Peng Shuai. She would have been about 24 years old at the time. He would have been in his late 60s. I know it's uh, quite the age gap, but this is not completely uncommon in China. CCP officials kind of get away with whatever they want to do. Um, they often get involved with affairs and oftentimes their, their wives and families even know about them but they keep them under wraps for the media and they make sure that nobody else knows about them. That is the nature of the CCP. You don't have a free press that can go around and report on things. You don't have journalists standing outside someone's door or a bar trying to catch somebody in the act. It just doesn't work like that in China. If you're within the party, if you're a party member in China, you're completely insulated from that stuff. So he, he has this affair and then he completely ghosts her. She gets super heartbroken. She's like, what the hell's going on? Why would somebody just leave me like that? Whatever. But then, actually three years ago, he decided that he was going to try to track her down again, which he did. But this time, his wife was even in on it. She knew about it and she was not happy. So he invited her to his house while his wife was home and proceeded to have relations with her in his bedroom with armed guards outside. And he made sure that she didn't have any sort of electronics or recording devices or anything just to make sure that this didn't get out to the public. His wife then proceeded to mentally torture her over the years, uh, basically trying to make her go crazy or just drop the whole thing or never show up again because she was very, very jealous of what her husband was doing. Now, like I said, what her husband was doing is not completely uncommon in China at all, but the fact is Peng Shuai made a Weibo post about it. And this is something that just doesn't happen in China. You might see some mild celebrity scandals, but this is at the top utmost level of the Chinese government that this happened. And she posted basically a letter to try to destroy him. And what this does is it created enough waves, you know, from this verified account that was allowed to post that Chinese people absolutely went mad. They ran with it. And they can't believe that such a high official would be implicated in something so public. So it's all over uh, people reposting. They're getting, it's getting taken down left and right. But the reason that this is so important is that if this is allowed to proliferate, if the Chinese government kind of says, okay, we're not gonna censor this anymore and allows people to talk about this huge, massive scandal, then this implies something much, much, much more serious. 
because China only allows large scandals. And this is this is top. This is like top of the iceberg level scandal. If they allow the people to talk about scandals like this, it means that something internally is very, very, very important. Something really either really bad or important or monumental is happening within the party because they're trying to divert attention away from that. And that's the only time they allow the populace to talk about that. So it's very important that we pay attention to this because if the government decides to crack down on it, continue to crack down on it and completely wipe the internet of all mention of this and try to put out fires left and right throughout the country because it's literally all everyone's talking about right now, then it'll be a normal reaction. That's what the Chinese government usually does in a situation like this. But if we don't see that and we do see them allowed to, you know, kind of allow this story to proliferate, that's going to be a completely different ordeal. And we're going to have to look into why that potentially is happening. There's lots of rumors out there, potential coup attempts and all this kind of stuff that I'm actually kind of skeptical of. Um, but a lot of those might make more sense if we actually see this story come to the forefront and, all, and people are allowed to talk about it. Now, while people talk about stuff like this, it's actually a very personal story to me because not so much the whole affair thing, but the amount of um, CCP official power that they people are allowed to have. I mean, I've told the story before about how I was in a CCP official's car and they were driving through the countryside at blistering fast speeds on backcountry roads. And when I asked, the response was, it doesn't really matter if we run over these poor peasants because we'll get away with it and it's not even worth our time to slow down. That's the amount of power that these people have. But it's not only that, it's also related to positions of power for males. And like I said in my previous video, China is a hugely chauvinistic society. The vast majority of government officials are men and they're men with power. They get away with really whatever they want. And uh, my wife actually, when she found out about Peng Shui's uh, Weibo post, she, she actually wanted me to tell you guys her story about what happened to her uh, when her parents tried to get her to join the CCP, to join the actual Communist Party of China. In China, people vie and really just want, they would die for a government position. To join the CCP is not so much uh, a pride thing. It's not like, wow, I'm in the CCP because I love my country. It's more of a thing like, I get super good benefits. Uh, it's very stable. It's almost impossible to get fired from your position. And the amount of kind of kickbacks you get if you enjoy the corruption that most CCP officials do have the potential to enjoy, then you, you know, you live a pretty good life compared to most people. Unfortunately for my wife, she just was not interested in that. She did really showed no loyalty to her government and did not want to be a part of that, especially because she saw what it, what it did to people around her. And so she wanted to pursue, she got her, her MBA and wanted to pursue a, a job in a company, a private company, which she did. In that process, her parents did everything they could to try to convince her to join the government instead. So what they would do is pull their connections, get her to meet government officials to try to maybe weasel her way into some sort of government sector. The most lucrative positions are tax positions, um, are customs positions because of the amount of bribery that is involved and money and kickbacks that are involved with holding goods at the port, which happens in China. Um, and then also uh, building management or land management because of the control that the CCP has over the, the land. Uh, the amount of power that one holds when leasing that land to a property developer is huge. The amount of money potential is massive. Now, these government positions pay nominally, like they're, you know, one or two thousand dollars a month on paper. But actually what you end up getting is much, much more. Like I said, my wife wasn't interested in any of that, but it didn't mean that she didn't you know, at least entertain her parents when they decided to have these dinners, when meeting with other government officials to try to get her a job. So there was one guy, he was a rising star in the area. I say star very sarcastically because it's just some like fat CCP official, corrupt bastard. But anyway, their families both met up for dinner and they discussed her resume and what she could potentially do. Anyway, kick the can down the road and then she gets a message from this guy who introduced himself as her uncle, by the way. Apparently they're some distant relative, non-blood related. I mean, in China, a relative is very relative. Uh, you're not really relatives of someone, but they can be your uncle, they can be your aunt or whatever. There's these really distant relationships that people hold just to keep connections. It's a, a society of connections. But anyway, this uncle texts her at 9 p.m. one night and says, I, I would like to meet up at your house to talk about your future job. 
And she immediately said, I don't think that's a good idea. It's very late. Maybe we can do it next time. So she called her parents and she told them, hey, this government official that you introduced me to over dinner, this, you know, 50, 60 year old man, he wants to meet up at my house at night to talk about my job. And her parents both said, we'll immediately put the tea on. And she said, well, are you going to come to join us? And they said, no, it's fine. He's your uncle. Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. And she said, that seems really weird. But she did it anyway. She put on the tea and uh, invited him up. And he came up and he was already drunk from a previous dinner that he had. Literally, the, the job of CCP government, government officials is not to actually do work. It's to make your subordinates, usually fresh, fresh college graduates, do your work while you go get drunk at dinners and go make connections with people. But anyway, long story short, he comes up and he's drunk and constantly over the entire course of the night keeps trying to grab her to make her sit on his lap. She keeps stroking her hair, tries to touch her face, keeps putting his hands in her lap, which she keeps avoiding. She keeps pushing him away. And she's very uncomfortable to the point where she says, this is, this is ridiculous. I'm going to call your wife because you're obviously too drunk to have a normal conversation, which he said, no, absolutely not. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And he'd calm down for a little while. She left the room to call me and I was living a good 2000 kilometers away from the area to ask me what to do. And I very sternly immediately said, you get your parents involved immediately, get out of that house and get, or get him out of the house ASAP and leave me on the, on the phone call. So she put her phone down in, in uh, the other room while she went to go deal with it. And he kept touching her. He kept trying to caress her and he said, listen, you don't need to tell my wife. You don't need to tell anyone about this because no one's going to find out about this. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. My driver is downstairs. He's waiting for, for me to finish up here. No one will know about our secret. Almost confident that if she wanted this job, he thought that she already knew what she needed to do. So she kicks him out of her territory, out of her zone multiple times to the point where he just gets frustrated and says, okay, we'll pick this up at a later date. So he actually managed, he, she manages to get him to leave. She's freaking out. She's crying. She's, she's talking to me on the phone and she immediately calls her parents. Her parents' response was immediately to keep her mouth shut, not to talk about it, not to tell anyone about it and that they would deal with it. Do you know how they dealt with it? Well, apparently they got a hold of him and over a long period of time basically said that it was actually a good piece of news because in the end of all this horrible scenario and her getting sexually harassed, he offered her a job. He offered her a position as his personal secretary and her parents were very, very excited. So not only did they deny her claims or say that it wasn't really a big deal and he just had too much to drink, also to keep her mouth shut, it was good in the end because she ended up getting a job as his personal secretary. She was heartbroken. Not only was this guy who, who she was supposed to trust completely you know, all over her and, and molesting her. Her parents didn't even take her side. So she felt so unsafe and so vulnerable in that situation that she was like, I am never ever going to work in this government. I'm never gonna be in a position where I need to be in mainland China even. We were both appalled at that situation. I remember I got a hold of her dad to talk about this. And they always just assured me that, you know, it's just an overreaction. He had too much to drink and nothing actually happened. So it's not that big of a deal. And in the end, you know, everyone's happy and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, this guy still has a leadership position in the government. Nothing happened. And he's probably done this, I don't know how many times. So this is just a little glimpse of how the, the Chinese government works in these positions of power. They, the people in the Chinese government are so used to getting away with whatever they want. There is no Me Too moments. There's no any of these situations where people are held accountable. And that's why this uh, Peng Shui story, this, this tennis player is so prolific because this doesn't happen. This is huge. This is like unprecedented in, uh, in the Chinese government. So it's very, very important that people pay attention to what the aftermath of this is. And I hope that my wife's story and then also Peng Shui's story can give a little hope to people to be able to speak out no matter what situation it is, whether it's their choice or not, to be able to have the freedom and confidence to speak out about situations like this. This also is very well connected to uh, my friend's story, Winston over on Serpent ZA, his story about how he actually had to work under a serial rapist. This guy was accountable for raping uh, hundreds of women while he was the uh, CEO and manager of a huge language school. He would coerce them, hold them ransom. He made people disappear. 
And in the end, he ended up barely serving a sentence for his crimes. And Winston actually was part and parcel part of the reason he got caught, at least for that small sentence that he served. Um, and it was a huge testament to how things work in China when, pe when men actually hold too much power in these positions. And actually, we wanted to do something about that. We wanted to say, okay, there's, there's these devastating stories out there. There's all these horrible things that have happened to these, these women, but what can we do about it, right? So we had an idea. We actually commissioned an artist, a Swedish guy, Hans Lundgren. Uh, he's pretty well known. He makes some beautiful, beautiful art. And he did an oil painting and a sketch. We decided that we would take the majority of the, the profits that we sell these paintings for and donate them to two charities. One is RAIN, which is the Rape and Incest, Incest Network to help American women in situations where they can't do anything um, if they've been raped or victims of incest, and also an international coalition to stop human trafficking for women. Um, so we're gonna cover both sides, the American angle, and also we're gonna cover the international angle. Um, and you guys can actually do something about this horrible situation and try to help out a little bit, and then also own a hilarious piece of art as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Lawinners, and I'll catch you on the next one.